This is part three of the Unit 7 notes. This set of notes is about uh, transcription and translation, collectively called protein synthesis. Uh, the, the notes are going to begin with a video showing you an overview of what's going to happen, and then we'll talk about the details of each with videos about each of the processes involved. With computer animation, we can enter the cell to view this remarkable system at work. After entering the heart of the cell, we see the tightly wound strands of DNA, storehouses for the instructions necessary to build every protein in an organism. In a process known as transcription, a molecular machine first unwinds a section of the DNA helix to expose the genetic instructions needed to assemble a specific protein molecule. Another machine then copies these instructions to a molecule known as messenger. When transcription is complete, the slender RNA strand carries the genetic information through the nuclear pore composite, the gatekeeper for traveling in and out of the cell nucleus. Messenger RNA strand is directed to a two-part molecular factory called a ribosome. After attaching itself securely, the process of translation begins. Inside the ribosome, a molecular assembly line builds a specifically sequenced chain of amino acids. These amino acids are transported from other parts of the cell and then linked into groups often hundreds of units long. Their sequential arrangement determines the type of protein manufactured. When the chain is finished, it is moved from the ribosome to a barrel-shaped machine that helps fold it into the precise shape of its chip. After the chain is folded into a protein, it is then released and shepherded by another molecular machine to the exact location where it is needed. So, of course, the machines it's talking about there are organelles and uh, enzymes and other kinds of molecules in the cell. So, how does this work? There are two main processes. First is called transcription. This is when the message encoded in the DNA is copied or transcribed into messenger RNA. Basically, what happens is the DNA unzips a partially to expose the part of DNA that needs to be transcribed and messenger RNA molecule is formed by uh, an enzyme called DNA, uh, RNA polymerase that matches up complementary bases on the messenger RNA. Remember, RNA doesn't have thymine, it has uracil instead, so everywhere it has to pair up with an adenine, it'll place uracil. Uh, and this makes the strand of messenger RNA, the long skinny molecule that you saw in the previous video, leaving the nucleus. This allows the message that's needed to uh, produce a protein to be exported from the nucleus because the DNA cannot leave the nucleus. So the messenger RNA travels from the nucleus to the ribosome and attaches to the ribosome where the next pro part of the process occurs and this is called translation. In the process of translation we're going to change from the language of bases which is in the DNA and RNA to the language of amino acids which will make a protein. So the messenger RNA is basically the manager or the director of this synthesis at the ribosome um, assembly line. Transfer RNA molecules with their anticodons and, and their amino acids will match up to and comp uh, the complementary messenger RNA bases in the codons. As they match up, 
the amino acids are linked together into proteins by means of um, dehydration synthesis producing a peptide bond and that happens at the surface of the ribosome. Once two amino acids are linked, the first transfer RNA is released, the, the uh, ribosome moves down a step, another transfer RNA comes into place, links onto the chain that's forming, the, the, then the previous transfer RNA is released and the process continues until the um, protein is finished. All right, now the next slide is going to be a video about showing what happens in the process of transcription. What you are about to see is DNA's most extraordinary secret, how a simple code is turned into flesh and blood. It begins with a bundle of factors assembling at the start of a gene. A gene is simply a length of DNA instruction stretching away to the left. Assembled factors trigger the first phase of the process, reading off the information that will be needed to make the protein. Everything is ready to roll. Three, two, one, go. The blue molecule racing along the DNA is reading the gene. It's unzipping the double helix and copying one of the two strands. The yellow chain snaking out of the top is a copy of the genetic message, and it's made of a close chemical cousin of DNA, called RNA. The building blocks to make the RNA enter through an intake hole. They are matched to the DNA, letter by letter, to copy the A's, C's, T's, and G's of the gene. The only difference is that in the RNA copy, the letter T is replaced with a closely related building block known as U. You are watching this process called transcription in real time. It's happening right now in almost every cell in your body. So that shows what happens when, when the copy of the DNA is made. Again, that's called transcription. It is making a copy of the DNA codes or codons to make a particular protein. So how does that code get transferred over? Well here's this shows a portion of the molecule. Here's a DNA codon, GCA, that is complement is complementary to the messenger RNA codon, TGU, and that's going to code for a particular protein. TGG on the DNA is complemented by messenger RNA ACC. These two um, triplets here are these two codons represent or code for two particular amino acids. Remember there are 20 total amino acids and there are 64 possible codons. We'll talk about that in a minute. So the messenger RNA leaves the nucleus, goes out, attaches to the ribosome, transfer RNA molecules come in and they have an anti-codon that will be complementary to the messenger RNA and on, on one end and the other end they carry one of the amino acids. So the CGU codon codes for the amino acid arginine, which is transferred or brought in to the translation process at the ribosome by the transfer RNA. Notice that the transfer RNA anticodon is the same as the original DNA codon. So CGU codes for the amino acid arginine. How are we going to figure out what the ACC codon codes for? The, the complementary anticodon in the transfer RNA is UGG, but what amino acid is this going to be? We can figure this out by looking at a chart, at a codon chart or a genetic code chart. These are two examples of genetic code charts. They work pretty much the same way. Um, the, the first letter is on the, uh, determines which row you look at. So if the first letter is U, we'll look at this first row here. If the second letter is also U, we'll look at the first column, and that means that our uh, codon that we're trying to figure out is located in this box. And the third letter would be represented over here. That would show us which row inside the box. And so if our codon is UUU, 
then our amino acid is going to be PHE, which is the abbreviation for phenylalanine. The one we're looking for is ACC. So let's look at the codon chart. The first letter is A, so it's in this row. The second letter is C, so it's in this column, so it has to be in this box right here. And the third letter is C, which shows right here, and then it shows that the amino acid that we're looking for is THR, which is the abbreviation for threonine. Um, some of codon charts will show you just the abbreviations for the amino acids. Others will show you the complete name. This uh, chart over here is the same, works the same way, one, two, and three, okay? Please notice that there are some of these codes that are, that are stopped. The stop codons are like the period at the end of a sentence. It means literally stop decoding right here. This is where the protein, this is the end of the protein. There's also a start codon, which, is also, which also codes for an amino acid. The, amino, the start codon is a UG on the messenger RNA, and that is the codon for the amino acid methionine. Now, methionine will be at the beginning of the, um, of the decoded protein or the produced protein, but it can also be found in the middle of the protein. So the start codon only means start at the very beginning. Once it's started, then it doesn't need to start again until after it stops. And that'll be, that would be a formation of a new protein. Here's another kind of genetic code chart. This one's a little bit different. It's a circle, and it works uh, similarly. If we look at the same codon again, ACC, so the, in the center of the circle, we'll find our first letter, A, and that tells us that the answer is going to be in this quadrant of the circle. The second letter was C, so that tells us we're in this wedge, and the third letter was C, and that shows that our amino acid that we're looking for is threonine. This particular one shows not only the name, but also the abbreviation. Please notice that most of the amino acids have two or more codons. There are only two that have one. Methionine has one, tryptophan has one, and there are one, two, three stop codons. All the others have two or four or six codons. Now let's watch a video about the translation process to, and to reinforce what we talked about as to how translation works. When the RNA copy is complete, it snakes out into the outer part of the cell. Then, in a dazzling display of choreography, all the components of a molecular machine lock together around the RNA to form a miniature factory called a ribosome. It translates the genetic information in the RNA into a string of amino acids that will become a protein. Special transfer molecules, the green triangles, bring each amino acid to the ribosome. The amino acids are the small red tips attached to the transfer molecules. There are different transfer molecules for each of the 20 amino acids. Each transfer molecule carries a three-letter code that is matched with the RNA in the machine. Now we come to the heart of the process. Inside the ribosome, the RNA is pulled through like a tape. The code for each amino acid is read off, three letters at a time, and matched to three corresponding letters on the transfer molecules. When the right transfer molecule plugs in, the amino acid it carries is added to the growing protein chain. Again, you are watching this in real time. And after a few seconds, the assembled protein starts to emerge from the ribosome. Ribosomes can make any kind of protein. It just depends what genetic message you feed in on the RNA. In this case, the end product is hemoglobin. The cells in our bone marrow churn out a hundred trillion molecules of it per second. And as a result, our muscles, brain, and all the vital organs in our body receive the oxygen they need. And this concludes the notes on transcription and translation.